On a wintry golf resort in Watford, armed like a fortress, what is surely one of the most frosty NATO meetings in recent memory. No NATO member has been invaded in 70 years, but a hard core of leaders, Trump, Erdogan and Macron, always threaten to spoil this 70th birthday party. How are you? The French president arrived, defending his view that NATO was brain dead. Emmanuel Macron laying some of the blame at President Erdogan, who had invaded Syria without telling him and who was now demanding that the alliance recognize Kurdish fighters there as terrorists. Though in the event, the Turkish leader backed down and Macron kept quiet. NATO's informal motto, all for one and one for all, apparently winning the day. 70 years on, we are rock solid in our commitment to NATO and to the giant shield of solidarity that now protects 29 countries and nearly a billion people. But that shield does not protect the ego of Donald Trump arriving on Marine One and turning out to be the Grinch that stole the Watford summit. Yesterday he told Canada's Prime Minister to his face that the Canadians were slightly delinquent for not paying their dues on defence. Where would you put Canada in that as they're not... Slightly delinquent, I'd say, Canada. Then later, at Buckingham Palace, Justin Trudeau was caught on camera, apparently making fun of Trump and his advisers. <laughs> America's president is famously thin-skinned at the best of times, and this afternoon he struck back. Oh, he's too fast. Do you think that Germany is too nice? And honestly, with Trudeau, he's a nice guy. I, I find him to be a very nice guy. But, you know, the truth is that uh, I called him out on the fact that he's not paying 2%. And I guess he's not very happy about it. He's facing possible impeachment, so appearances alongside world leaders are a chance to change the subject. But today, the pressure was perhaps too much. So we'll go directly back. I think we've done plenty of press conferences. Unless you're demanding a press conference, we'll do one. But I think we've answered plenty of questions. His press conference now cancelled. Marine One whisked him away, leaving Canada's leader trying to explain what he meant last night. We were all uh, surprised and I think pleased to learn that the next G7 will be uh, at Camp David. Uh, I think that was an unscheduled announcement and uh, uh, I think everyone's team, well, every different leader has teams who every now and then uh, have uh, their jaws drop at uh, unscheduled surprises like uh, that video itself, for example. As for Boris Johnson, well, he denied laughing at Trump last night, declining to mention the president's name aiming his cannons at Jeremy Corbyn instead. There is a choice between uh, those who want to, to strengthen uh, NATO and those in the uh, Labour opposition uh, who actually want to destroy it, destroy NATO. Perhaps the most serious issue facing NATO is Turkey's purchase of a Russian missile system and the possibility that one day Turkey might walk away from the alliance itself. According to Boris Johnson, the missile issue was not discussed at today's formal meeting. Instead, this birthday party has been overshadowed by very personal spats between the leaders themselves. And compared with the Cuban Missile Crisis, the Soviet invasions of Hungary and Czechoslovakia, the September the 11th attacks on America, these spats hardly amount to a serious threat to the NATO alliance. Jonathan Rugman, Channel 4 News, Watford. Well, earlier I spoke to the former Conservative Defence Minister, Tobias Elwood, and I put it to him that the summit has not been an inspiring spectacle. You've got some strong characters here. Yes, there was language, which I think, uh, in reflection, obviously took uh, attention, media attention, away from the substantive. Um, but we faced diverse, complicated threats, and there is a recognition that countries have to spend their 2% minimum, and we have to work together. There are substantive disagreements over, not just over funding, but over Turkey and where it's getting its weapon systems from, policy in Syria, uh, you know, what to do about former uh, ISIS fighters. Russia must be laughing. Well, uh, they may be laughing, but they're also recognising that the nations came together, the strongest and most powerful military nations in the Western world. There probably was a little bit of clearing of the air and a recognition, as you say, how can you have a NATO member that starts purchasing uh, air defence systems from our adversaries. How can you have a NATO member that uh, invades its neighbour 
and actually then attacks the very people, the Kurdish Democratic Forces, that NATO was training? These are difficult questions, and let's not dodge them. But NATO itself will bring together a council of experts to work out its future strategy. But while Britain has committed to its 2% spending, um, there are a lot of rumours of actual cuts in force numbers. Are you sure that's not going to happen? There are rumours. I've checked with the head of the armed forces and so forth. We often get a little bit of inter-service rivalry. There is no intention of this government to cut any armed forces numbers. Now, obviously, you, you were a Rory Stewart backer rather than the Boris Johnson one, but how comfortable were you with his behaviour today? I mean, clearly being filmed, you know, sort of sniggering about Donald Trump with other leaders and then denying it. I, I understand the attraction in wanting to talk about this. Whenever there's a bit of off-camera conversation, it, it, everybody gets very excited about it. We are less out of kilter on either side of the Atlantic than most people think. They are our closest, most important ally. I mean, would you say that, you know, Boris Johnson specifically should make more of an effort to get things right if he's making honest mistakes? And I'm talking about the press conference with Boris Johnson in which he said Jeremy Corbyn uh, wants to destroy NATO when the Labour manifesto clearly doesn't. Can you imagine any US president wanting to phone up Jeremy Corbyn in the middle of the night and say, I've got a concern because of an issue has happened around the world. What is your advice? It would, it would not happen. Jeremy Corbyn himself, once he's prime minister, away from the manifesto, could do all sorts of things. He could get rid of our nuclear deterrent. I'm talking about telling the truth about things like Jeremy Absolutely. Corbyn wants I... to destroy NATO. That's just not true. You have to look deeper than the manifesto. You actually have to look at the people themselves to say where would they take Britain from a security perspective. And there is massive concern from the Labour perspective, the way it's moved to the left itself, of what they would do, who they would befriend. You, you say people make mistakes. I've interviewed you many times. I can't remember any factual mistakes you've made. Boris Johnson makes them every day. Um, I, I can only say that I would like every, all of us you know, to do more, to do our best in the frenzy of the electioneering campaign and also uh, put your hand up when you absolutely get it wrong. And hand on heart, given you wanted neither of them, are you finding this as depressing as the rest of us? I, it's certainly a very different campaign than I've ever experienced before and that's why I'm saying I think there's an awful lot of... Uh, uh, reflection that uh, we should do on, on how we conduct our campaigns. Tobias Elwood, thank you very much.